Hello and welcome back to Nikki's Scrapbooking Adventures. Today is Calling Creatives and I have my friend Melanie here and we are going to talk about the bash kit. Melanie, would you introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Melanie from A Creatively Crafted Life. Nikki and I have been doing this now for a couple months where we hang out once a month to talk about all things related to using up our stash and spending a little less money <laughs> on craft supplies. At least that's our aim. Yep, that's our aim. So we talked on Monday a little bit of a check-in. Melanie bought like maybe one or two items at Hobby Lobby and I'm doing better, but not perfect. You know, that's how it goes. You have to give yourself some forgiveness. I will say that my tracker is working for me a little bit better since I changed it from single sheets of paper to projects and single sheets of paper. So I think I'm doing a little bit better. That's good. And that's really all that matters, right? Just a little bit of prog progress is is all, all we really should be aiming for, not perfection. Yep, yep. So today we're talking about the bash kit. So this is a concept from Bash or Scrapbook Stash, where you gather items that you don't normally necessarily use or items that you want to use up. So on Monday, we talked with Melanie and she has some great items. So you should definitely go check it out. Very inspiring. And we're gonna go through my bash kit today. I'm so excited. I can't see what you picked. So how many items did you did you pick for your kit? I picked about 15. Well, I'm going to need some help <laughs> because I just can't quite figure out what I want to do. So I'm going to flip views and we can look at what I've definitely figured out. And then, Melanie, you can help me pick out the last several items, okay? Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. I can't wait to see. This is exciting. It's kind of fun to see what other people are you know, what they have in their stash that they're hoping to use up. Absolutely. And it's fun to see different styles too. Like yours had a lot of pink in it and mine's <laughs> gonna have a lot of pink too because I don't use pink. I've got a boy. So pink is not the color that we use in my family. So right, right. that made it into my bash kit for sure. So this is my bash kit. And when I was telling you there's a lot of pinks, there's actually a lot of florals too, because florals aren't something that I normally use. And I picked these sets of florals up from my local scrapbook store. And they're super cute. These are springy. And I mean, this is a lot of flowers. Wow, you're putting all of those items in your kit to bash? So I'm not gonna, my goal is not to finish them all. It's even to just use them. I have not touched oh, okay. them. Yeah, so, I gotcha. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to finish them because I have like, <laughs> <laughs> they, and florals is just not something I reach for. And right. during the bash bowl, florals was actually an item that we had to use. And I realized, okay, I can put florals on a boy's layout, as long as they're blue. Right. And in this case, I wanna use these orange. I think these orange are actually really fun. They're very old uh, from Michael's. Let's see if there's a year on here, 2013. So I told you I had started scrapbooking in college. This is scrapbooking in college from college, 2013. Like that's when I picked wow. this up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you've never you and you've never even opened the package. Haven't even opened the package. Yeah, it's time. It's time it's to time. battle. <laughs> it's time, and I've got a boy, so I feel like I can get away with using the orange on the layout as just an extra pop of color because blue and orange is becoming like one of my favorite color combos. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, for sure, absolutely, that would work. So. Goal is not to use all of it, but at least to break into it, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Are you just going to do scrapbook layouts? Or do you do cards at all? I can't remember if you do or not. I dabble in cards to the point where I'll do one maybe every month. Okay. So definitely more of a scrapbooker, but I agree. Cards are just easier to make bulk of. Yeah, especially if you come up with a layout or something and just make, you know, five of the same kind of design. So I was just thinking, because you have so many florals, you've got like Mother's Day coming up, you know, you could at least make a couple cards um, with your flowers for Mother's Day. That would be an option. 
So my question, because I don't send cards ever, and my husband is the postman, you know, like he works for the post office. Um, wouldn't like the paper flowers that are kind of bulky increase the price of the card? Like, how does that work? Yeah, they could. Um, it just depends on how much bulk they've added and, and overall weight. So, you know, you do have to kind of watch how much you do add on top of it. But I would probably just keep my card very flat, like don't add a lot of like dimensional um, adhesive and stuff and just use the like use the flowers as the dimension. And gotcha. Um, if they have, sometimes with those flowers, they have like the center bits that are a little bit hard, um, like the stamens or whatever they call them. So quite often what I'll do is I'll just put like um, a cotton swab or something over top of it, just so it doesn't poke through the envelope. Um, and then I just weigh it. If it's, if it's under an ounce, I don't typically add additional postage. Um, but if it is over, I'll throw in an extra, you can buy extra ounce postage stamps. They're not quite full price. So it's a little bit more, but not not significant in the scheme of things. Okay, so I've seen, I've actually gotten a couple cards from card makers who have bulk and they even used like a thin piece of foam padding somehow. I don't know where they got it from, but that actually helped protect their card too. So maybe I need to look into doing something like that too. To protect yeah, that could be. Hours. It probably could get it at like the Dollar Tree or something like that. It would just be in like with the pack, uh, like the um, mailing supplies. Yes. Sometimes you can get. It's not even bubble wrap. It's almost like um, I don't know what you want to call it. It's like a melted foam <laughs> spongy thing. <laughs> I don't yeah, know that's what exactly what I'm talking about. I yep, that's exactly what I'm talking about. The so closest I can think about it, if you've ever bought any close to my heart stamps, they come with a foam plastic thing inside of it. It's very similar to that. Yes. Yep. That's exactly what it is. You're right. Yep. 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 Okay. So I've got three packs of flowers. Okay. And then of course I have this beautiful. Elena rub on transfer set. I have more of this collection, but I'm liking these rub ons for journaling purposes. Oh, okay. Love these colors. The so, colors are gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. On the 6th of March, I'll link that video in the upper right hand corner. So if you want to go check it out, I actually did a junk journal style notebook page but i ended up using simple stories rub-ons and i ended up liking them i think i still like 49 and market better but these colors man they're so pretty and i think you could probably get some cards out of this too i think that's maybe like loved this you and me live simply those are yeah. good scrapbooking and card making sayings absolutely so are the are the rub-ons really buttery I don't know how to describe them. So there's some rub-ons that just transfer like super easily. And then there's others that it feels like you have to fight to get them to transfer. Um, both 49 Market and Simple Stories are pretty buttery um, and easy to transfer. Simple Stories is a little bit harder, but like marginally. Okay. So, so the other like thing that will be interesting to find out because rub-ons were a big thing quite a few years ago. Um, so it's interesting that they're coming back. Rub-ons tend to have a shelf life. I don't know if you know that or not, but they lose their transferability over time. Not all, because I have some from Stampin' Up from probably about 15 years ago that still work fantastic. But I have had other ones where they just they just don't transfer after a while. So just something to keep in mind. And it's good that you're adding it to your batch kit so that you do use them and don't let them age out, so to speak. Yep, exactly. And that's part of the reason why I thought about using this one was because I have received old rub bonds and they just never worked. Yeah. So this is, I don't know, item number four. Number five <laughs> is actually from Stampin' Up. So item number five is actually from Stampin' Up. And I thought these are rub bonds, but I'm looking at this label. It looks like they're painted gold vinyl stickers but they're clear. Oh. 
Okay. Cool. Interesting. Again, I have not opened this, but I do kind of want to look now. Okay. Yeah, they're clear stickers, but they're gold. So they're very pretty. I got them from a garage sale for five dollars, but I mean, that's cute. Very usable. Oh, totally. And uh, vinyl, clear vinyl stickers like that, those are great if you like to embellish your photos. You know, if you like to kind of overlap them on photos and stuff, because you can still see through. Um, not That's not for everybody, but that is something that's, that um, I've seen people do that's kind of cool. I'll have to try it. I don't think I'd probably use something like this. This is probably go underneath, but maybe like a heart here or there. Yeah, for Very sure. Cute. So that's another item. So we got one, two, three, five. And then I picked up buttons and I just want to use them more. Not necessarily like get rid of them. I just like buttons as an item on a page. And so I picked up a variety of buttons from Scraps KC a long time ago. And they do a bag this size for $2. Now I've used several of these buttons. So it was jam packed and even more than it is now but I've got quite a variety here that I think I could definitely use on some scrapbook pages. They also make really great centers for flowers. So you may even be able to layer them with some of your other floral bits there that you have. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so then I also have some camera. Wood veneer. Wood veneer, thank you. <laughs> um, that I wanna use in something that I just got for a dollar from a garage sale was these license plates. These are actually metal, but they're adhesive backed. And I'm going oh, on a trip in April, so I figured we could totally use this on that. Who are those by? Those are really cool. Um, Karen Foster Designs. Now this is like yellowed. Uh, Probably like 20, 2015 or something like that. Yeah, I'm not seeing a... No date on here but yeah these are probably old <laughs> especially well, because if you think about it like the packaging has a metal brad wow. nobody now does metal on right. their packaging <laughs> right well and look at the original price it looked like it was three dollars and fifty cents yeah that looks like it was handwritten though i bet that was another like somebody else bought it from a garage sale <laughs> fair <laughs> enough fair enough but so, I love those. those are cool especially for a road trip Yes. Yep. So I think that's fun. And then I have some Bella Boulevard puffy stickers that are just plain white, but I've had this for like two years and still haven't used it. Is so, it because it's white and you tend to gravitate towards more color? I think it got lost. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, when I first started scrapbooking, I was all gun ho to Janet Madison's way of organizing by color binders. Yeah. I don't reach for my color binder that I organized. And this was in that color binder. And I pulled it out. I was like, you know what? I think I could probably use this. Right, right. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. But that's a lot of stuff for eight. <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, um, you don't want to make this too, like, what's the word I'm trying to think? too difficult <laughs> yeah. or, or too so, overwhelming so you know you've got some think, great variety there though yep I think I'm only going to pick one more item and this is where I need your help okay so this is my 12 by 12 project bag so I have things like a folio kit and a stampin up pack uh kit and a card kit and uh, a calendar and a card box and another card box and then things for my son that I want to use later so this doesn't count I don't want to do this yet so okay so I'm gonna have you ever made cards to give as a gift I have and actually that's why I bought this was because I have two sets of card gifts that I want to put in here Okay, so you already have cards for them. Because I was going to say you could always combine that with the flowers and make a bunch of cards to give to somebody as a gift. Oh, that's even better. Because that means, well, look, it says includes three blank A2 cards and envelopes. So with the bulk, I bet you 
that would be better for this type of box. Right. Okay, so I got two of them. Okay. I don't know. So I gotta pick one of these items. Well, I think you should go for the card box, at least one of them. Okay, I'll go for the card box. Boom, yeah. yay. <laughs> so those are my nine items. It sounds like you're gonna get me into more card making. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I aim to inspire. I aim to inspire people to, you know, do all paper crafting. Sounds like you're already doing some journaling too. So, you know. Yeah, I actually was inspired to do that by Scrap School, if you believe it, where it, they were focusing on scrapbooking, but all these creators were using um, no, travelers' notebooks to scrapbook. Oh, okay. Like, okay. I could probably try that. And I did the Felicity Jane sale like you did. Uh-huh. And I picked up several of the travelers' notebooks. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. No, I think, I think um, it's good to switch things up periodically just to kind of refresh yourself, you know, um, just it's still paper crafting. You're still using all the supplies that you've invested in because a lot of them are transferable. You know, you can mix and match. But it's good to just switch it up and then, you know, go back to your 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 main love, so to speak, which I think in both of our cases is scrapbooking. Um, and you just feel a little bit more inspired and, and ready to ready to tackle things. Absolutely. Now I'll keep this in my 12 by 13 or 13 by 13 organizer from some assemblage required. I do have a review of that. Um, in February. So I'll link that in the upper right hand corner too. So you can check that out. But I also have a giveaway. So going through all of my stuff, I realized I had a basket of crap that I haven't put away and don't want to put away. And one of those was actually a collection by Pink Paisley, uh, probably from 2013, maybe earlier. And I had a lot of duplicate paper. So I want to give that away to somebody. So in the comments below, you need to tell me what's one item in your stash that you would like to use but don't. And then Ooh, that's you, a good question. Yep. So once you answer that question, what you can do, I'll pick a winner at the beginning of April, and you'll that winner will have to email me at Nikki's dot scrapbooking dot adventures at gmail.com and that winner will receive all of these papers now when i was telling you i had duplicates i wasn't kidding <laughs> look at all this paper that's all the same and it all wow. has ink in it <laughs> it's got a kind of a um is it a valentine's theme to it or a love theme it looks like yeah sweet crush by pink paisley so I have more of this paper, but I'm not going to use these ones. So I would love to pass it on to somebody else. So make sure you answer the question below. What's one thing that you want to use in your stash? And then I encourage you to add it to a bash kit. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great suggestion, right? Tackle something or put something in the foreground of what you want to use, but just never seem to get around to doing and uh, focus on using that in the next little while. Absolutely. So don't forget to check out Melanie's video on Monday. I'll link that as well below and then also in the upper right hand corner. We do have a playlist. So if you want to go back and watch all of the other videos, I highly encourage that. I'll have that at the end of my video for you to click on so that you can just go to that playlist and watch all of the videos again. And we'll be back next month, right? So be sure to subscribe, click the notification bell. Because we want yeah. you to come back and hear what we have, what what next we have up our sleeves. So next, hint, hint, is sales, hint, hint, because national <laughs> scrapbooking is coming up, and um, I'm planning on shopping. I don't know about Melanie, but that was my goal was uh, to make it to National Scrapbook Day because I know there's so many sales out there. Yeah, I'm a I'm a little I'm a little scared. I'm a little scared because I, I could do some serious damage, I think, but we'll see. We'll see. You have to, you have to come back and listen to what, what our, what our strategies are going to be for handling these. Absolutely. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>